Hey, uh, Alex, it's Ian Brown. I uh, just want to ask, first of all, uh, kind of where you are in your recovery from this injury and uh, you know, how much the extra time uh, has helped you to, you know, to, to get ready for the season. Hopefully there will be a season. Uh, yeah, you know, I think uh, physically I'm 100%. I feel very, I feel very good. Um, just moving around with everything, my swing, my throwing, uh, running, I feel, I feel really good. The complex for us uh, shut down for three weeks you know, when the whole uh, coronavirus and all that started coming out. So um, I still stayed active at home. I I was hitting, throwing a little bit and uh, working out, but obviously didn't have the the amount of resources I do at the, at the facility. So um, when I got back, uh, we just got in like last week was our first week back into the, into the complex. Uh, And yeah, I mean, we took it slow again. We kind of just ramped it back up just, you know, seeing where how the three weeks, how my body uh, um, kind of looked and how it felt uh, to my trainer. And from there, uh, you know, I feel like we're back on track. You know, we're we're swinging. We're I, people are throwing to me in the cage, and, and we're taking BP. And you know, it's just kind of now. It's just the uh, the extra time is just giving me more more time to to get my endurance up. Do you feel like now, you know, if uh, you know spring training started and you uh, again, and you had a ramp up period that uh, you'd pretty much be ready to play from there uh, whenever the season starts? Yeah, whenever the season starts, I think uh, I'll, I'll be ready. You know, whether that is soon, whether it's whether it's a few months down the road or, or whatever that may be, yeah, I think physically, I think I'm ready. Thanks, Alex. Hey, Alex, this is Jason Master Donato for the Boston Herald. Um, I was just wondering, uh, when you're talking to, you know, other players and, and you guys are kind of um, thinking about, you know, what the next steps are for, for getting back on the field, uh, what are the things you guys are talking about? What are your concerns and, and what kind of stuff do you guys uh, think about when you think about getting back to, to playing again? Uh, that's a good that's a good question. I think for me personally, it's just uh, – I'm all about safety. You know, I just want to make sure that we're, we're safe. We're, we're playing it smart. We're doing the right things. But um, with that being said, you know, the, the athlete in me, the player in me, uh, I want to play, you know, I want to, I want to be out on the field. I like, that's, that's where I love to be. So um, it's just really, I'm, I'm in it for whenever, you know, whenever safe, whenever smart and whenever, uh, I guess there's been a lot of talks and a lot of rumors of, of different scenarios and, and things like that. And, um, you know, some of them seem a little bit extreme and I get, I get that we want to play. And like I said, I, I, I want to play as well. I just think, you know, we have to, we have to also, you know, be cautious with our players and, and got to be safe for, for the families involved. Right. And there, it seems like there are some scenarios where you, you'd have to be away from your family. Do you feel like that would be kind of a, a stopping point for players where they just don't want to have to be away from their, their family? Uh, yeah, I think so, for sure. Definitely um, a lot of like, you know, the older, the older players or, or with, with, with wives, children, and, and, you know, even some people who just had babies with, with their spouses too. It's, it's, uh, it's just something that like, it just doesn't seem, doesn't seem, illogical to me to to try to you know separate families like that or or to make players uh quarantine it's just that that's a little tough uh tough to kind of kind of grasp my mind around but um you know i'm I'm sure we're we're kind of still working through those right and then lastly just the idea of playing without fans is that something that you, you you've kind of come around to now uh well i mean you know for for me playing baseball my whole life we've 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 dealt with it before you know we we've played at Arizona league uh games and just no fans it's just the the guys scrimmages we've done it all so um i i'm I'm not opposed to it it's just you know you start thinking i like as a player i start thinking like okay so i get it like for maybe for the first 30 games it's fine but what happens when all the players are a little bit sore a little bit you know uh, it just gets repetitive. It, it, the fans bring that energy. The fans kind of add that extra adrenaline that that kind of maybe you know, pushes you a little bit more. So that's that's the that's the only downfall I see about not having fans. It, it's tough, you know. I I like those connections. I like when you make a play, when a pitcher strikes somebody out, or you hit something. I, I like to hear the cheering. I, you like to hear the boos. You know, it's just it, 
it's that it's that uh, that instant feedback that kind of gets you that adrenaline or makes you uh, a little bit nervous, and, and you and you feed off of that. Right. Thanks, man. Hey, Alex, Sean McAdam, Boston Sports Journal. Um, just wondering, you know, you're new to the organization, obviously. Um, can you give us a sense of what it's been like just being in Fort Myers for these last couple of months, maybe not having the relationships with people in the organization? What have you been doing, especially, uh, you know, when the complex was shut down for a couple of weeks, passing the time? Give us a sense, if you would, of, you know, what the last couple of months have been like. Yeah, I think, uh, I mean, you know, in general, I think we could all sum it up that 2020 has been a, a tough year for us. And um, it kind of started, you know, with, with Kobe Bryant, you know, just started off how he passed away. And then uh, for me, I had gotten traded from the Dodgers to Boston, which, um, you know, at the time it was tough. It was hard. But uh, looking back at it now, I think it was a blessing. It, it's just, it's um, coming here in Boston and, and just, you know, the, the short spring training that we did have, I felt like I got to meet everybody, um, you know, and, and uh, kind of make a little connection with, with guys. And um, yeah, it's, it, it's, it's not, it's not fun that, that obviously everyone got sent home and, and things like that. But um, I, I love the team. I love the organization. I love the guys. I think, I think all of them are, are they're genuine people, you know, they're good. And, and really all they care about is uh, you putting in the work and, and going out there and, and, and playing hard. And uh, that, that I can get behind. Um, with the complex being uh, shut down and, and me being out here, I just, I'm lucky. I'm right off of a, a river out here. So, you know, my backyard, I can, I can throw a line out anytime I can go fishing. Um, so that, that kind of helped me buy, buy some time. Uh, and, and like I said, I, I had a couple, couple workout stuff here, a couple weights that, you know, I was, I was doing some home workouts and things like that, just to kind of keep your mind sane and, and keep your, keep, keep, uh, progressing, you know, not, not regress anytime. And how many other players, um, are in the Fort Myers area now, Alex, anybody else on the major league roster that would we, that we would know, or anybody that you um, kind of, uh, bonded with yeah there's nobody out here so I've, i i kind of took the whole quarantine thing pretty serious i i stayed isolated i stayed at the, i stayed at the house and like i said i'd go fishing here and there but um yeah it was it was just me and and my best friend that that uh is staying with me but um i mean chris dale's coming to the complex right now rehabbing as well um but really, yeah, I'm not, I'm not in, I'm not seeing anybody um, like that. You know, we're, we're, we're still taking our social distancing pretty serious. Hey, thanks, Alex. Hey, Alex, it's Mike. Hey, uh, Tra- oh. Bye, Mike. Okay, I appreciate that. Um, Alex, Mike Petralia, CLNS Media. Um, my question to you is every player wants to play, but playing specifically in games. And given what you've been through physically, I'm curious to get your impression on how many games you feel you guys need you specifically actually uh to feel comfortable playing uh guys other other athletes and other sports saying that it's at least two to three weeks do you have a sense of how many games you need to play to feel comfortable and ready to go uh full speed and i'm are you taking that? Are you uh, talking as of because of my injury or just yeah. the yeah. general of like what it's going to take for everybody to come back like a second spring training because of your injury? Okay. Um, so with that being said, I think the break we've already season would have started if this whole pandemic didn't happen. So um, I'm, I'm already a hundred percent. Like I, uh, I don't think, I think, you know, um, what it would take the normal player is it would take me maybe even less now because I'm already doing everything. I, I'm I'm staying on my hitting, my running, conditioning, uh, working out, throwing. I've been doing all that, and all I've been doing is uh, just kind of adding to it. You know, we, we started off with, with 20 throws. Then we go to 30. Now we're 60, 90 throws a day. And it's like once you start kind of building up all that, your endurance, it, you start just seeing that, you know, you're ready. Like, uh, I feel good. Uh, 
I remember when I first started rehab and that, you know, after, after a couple of throws, it was like, I was, I was, I felt gassed. I felt fatigued. I just tired. But now it's like, you know, it's taken, it's taken 60 throws. It's taken, you know, 65 throws. And it's like, and then after that, it's like, okay, I'm a little bit tired now, but you know, it's just, it's just working our way up. We're just, you know, doing everything. The more swings we're taking every day, the more weights we're pushing in the weight room. So, um, yeah, we're just kind of we're kind of just going, and, and I don't really think there's gonna take two three weeks. I think it's just gonna be whatever the the ramp up period would be for anybody. And and if I can follow up real quick, how anxious are you to prove to yourself uh, that you can be the player you can be? Um, I mean, yeah, I, I was I would assume like. Uh, Anxious? I don't know if that's the right word, I guess, for me. Um, you know, I do – I play the way I play. I, 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 you know, I mean, I play 100%. I go all out. And, uh, you know, I think the good thing now is, is kind of seeing how when I was hurt and, you know, I was having trouble sleeping because would, I would have pain in my back. I would have trouble moving, bending over, uh, putting socks on. It's like you go from that to – to, you know, healing yourself and, and the mental grind of going through uh, physical pain every day. But then you start realizing, like, the more you push through these boundaries and your body gets uh, gets better, it, it, it adjusts, it adapts and overcomes, you know, any obstacle that you put it through. And uh, so for me, I think I'm at such a good position mentally and physically that I'm not worried about that. I'm just I'm just ready to go and just play and and I I know that if I play and I feel the way I feel right now like it's my numbers will will be what they always have been I, I'll be able to you know just play 100% with with no with no feelings of of injury like I said thanks Alex hey Alex it's uh Julian McLean from the from the Boston Globe quick question do you got did you get any more uh, I guess x-rays on your back and if not do you plan on doing so yeah, we haven't done a, a following up since I've uh, got traded over to the team. We did, we did the, we did them, but um, I'm I'm assuming that you know when when we all get back to to whenever it is, uh, spring training or the or the bring up or whatever, um, I think that they'll we'll probably have some imaging retaken and stuff like that. But I think the biggest thing is just kind of how how I feel uh, through everything, you know, through the workload, through. Big, everyday activity you know everyday running everyday hitting everyday throwing um and uh we're doing you know four days a week right now and I'm I'm handling it extremely well uh you know I could take on more it's just you gotta yeah we gotta keep going I don't I think the x-ray could show that you know maybe there's still a fracture maybe there's still a little bit of a crack thing in there but if I don't experience any pain or any discomfort at all then I don't think there's anything to to worry, but I, but for your question, I think we will uh, get follow-up imaging at some point. Cool. Thanks, man. Hey, Alex, uh, Dan Roach from WBZ here. Um, hope you're doing well. Just a, uh, a quick question from a perspective, perspective wise. Uh, do you think maybe because of the way things have gone here that you might be a little bit more comfortable uh, even getting started when you do start with the Red Sox because you got traded, that's new because you came in with an injury, now you've been able to overcome that, that once you get going here, that things might be maybe a little bit easier for you from the sense of adjusting and becoming a member of the Sox. Yeah, definitely. I think now, because, uh, like, when we do ramp up, I'll be with the guys. You know what I mean? I'll be I'll be day, day in every day going out to the field, stretching with them, throwing with them, all the drill work. Um, so I think that's going to be the biggest thing. When I was – when we were here for spring training – I was on like a re, really, really uh, rehab program. Just wasn't going out to the field much. Was kind of in the weight room, training room a lot. Just um, you know, doing various things in there. So yeah, I think I think it's going to make a big difference. I think it's just going to be like one of the guys kind of can go out there and and just you know relax, have fun, mess around with the guys, joke around with them, and in, in, uh, BP shagging drills or or you know just just mess with them and. I think that's going to be something that's going to be fun. Thank you. Hey, Alex, uh, this is Peter Abraham from the Globe. To follow up on uh, Dan's question just now, 
how often are you talking to people from the organization, whether it's uh, the coaches or Ron Renneke or anybody else? How, how much communication has there been? There's been, a, I think, I think there's a checkup, you know, about every week, maybe, uh, I wouldn't say two, I think two weeks a little bit long, but yeah, every week or so there, there's, we, we talk, there's a, there's a checkup, follow up text, you know, see how everything's going. Uh, we, um, my trainer right now, we, when we hit and stuff like that, they'll send the videos over to Ron and, and our hitting coach and all the, and everybody. And, uh, they'll, they'll just, you know, keep on. So like, they're very in the loop with, with the progression that I'm having. It's just, you know, they'll send back, like, he's like looking great, already looking ready, like all this stuff. And, uh, so they have an idea of where I'm at and how I'm looking, how the swing's developing, all this stuff. And, uh, so we're, we're in, we're in contact. And, and the other question, something different. You, um, you're obviously a guy who loves baseball. How important do you think it is for people who are kind of going through this whole thing as a country just to see you guys back playing baseball? And, and how much, as a player, do you think that that's important to do? I think it's important, but I think, you know, I, th- I also think at the same time we have to be cautious and be safe. Um, you know, so, like I said, I'm, I'm all for it. I, I love playing baseball. I, I, it's you know, it's um, it's something like you said that, you know, a lot of people would love to see it. But um, I also personally think that a lot of people would just love to see sports in general. I think people are just missing, you know, sports. And, yeah, baseball is an amazing game. It's just I want to make sure that everybody's safe. You know, we're we're we're, we're just I want to make sure that, you know, we're starting it up for, for the right reasons and, and and things like that. It's just um you know, I want to make sure everybody's family safe. I want to make sure this this doesn't get worse. You know, where we don't uh, prolong this situation. You know, just something, something like around those lines. Just as long as we're safe and and you know we do all the things that are right and necessary and and, and cross the right you know the right boxes and they say that we're ready to go and play. Then I'm I'm out there. You know, I'm giving in 110 percent and and uh, that's that's all I could say about that. Do you feel confident that, that that'll be able to happen? Um, I mean, I think I'm, I think I'm halfway on it. You know, I think I see, I see both sides of it. That, that's the problem. I just, I just see both sides of the situation. I see the, I see the benefits and then I see the, the, the cons. So, um, yeah, I'm not, I'm not on either side. I'm just, I'm just right in the middle. And, and I think, I think the thing I can tell you guys is, uh, you know, no matter what happens, I'm training every single day. I'm putting in the work for, uh, as in, as there's going to be a season, you know, as if there's going to be a season, I'm a, I'm going to keep preparing and training and keeping my mind sharp. Just, just, uh, you know, so, so I'm already mentally locked in and physically ready to go for it. All right. Hey, thanks, man. Alex, this is Chris Cotillo from Mass Live. Obviously, this is way out of your control and a little bit in the past, but in this scenario where there's no season, uh, the trade that brought you to Boston would mean that Mookie goes to L.A. and never plays a game. I mean, has that thought crossed your mind, and, and how crazy would that be? <laughs> uh, that would be that'd be pretty crazy. I mean, that would that'd be pretty nuts. Um it really, I really haven't thought about it much, but you know, I think, I think it's tough. I think it's a tough situation if if that is the case scenario, you know, uh, our scenario for uh, for the Dodgers. But um, uh, I mean, yeah, it, it, you know, it, it's just hey, that's part of that's part of life, right? You know, we can't expect these things, and you know, I think for the Dodgers, that's that's tough. That's a tough deal, but. Um, you know, hey, everything happens for a reason. And just to follow up, as a player, how important is it to get the year of service time, no matter uh, how much baseball is played? Oh, I mean, I suppose that yeah, that's important from like a a business standpoint. But I'll be honest, like as a player, like me personally, I just I just care about playing. Like I'm not thinking about service time like that. Like I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to play. You know, like. Yeah, it's nice that you know we're getting an extra year of service time under our belt, but I mean, I think I think everybody, me personally, I'll, I'll sit there and be like, well, you know, if we didn't play this year, not really like a year. Like, yeah, I was, I'm a big leaguer. I still feel like a big leaguer, but it's just like it's tough when you don't play a year. But you know, 